Hello everybody, my name is Christoph Rettmeier from the University of Hawaii. I'm going to present our paper titled A Circular Ecoplanar Sequence for Fast Volumetric FMRI. The paper was published in the March edition of MRM in 2019. The aim of this work was to develop a sequence for fast functional MRI. This means that a high sampling rate of the brain volumes during the course of the acquisition is desired while keeping the compromise of image quality minimal. Increased temporal resolution has received particular interest in fMRI because it gives enhanced statistical power, a better resolution of the hemodynamic response function, and allows a better ident identification of physiological components and motion. Ecoplanar imaging is the most commonly used fMRI method, which is then combined with blip chi sampling schemes and parallel imaging to achieve higher degrees of acceleration. Our approach is based on two major characteristics. A, the reduction of readout length going from EPI to CEPI, which means cutting the corner of the X and Y planes. A shorter readout enables shorter TR and consequently higher sampling rates as well. Secondly, we use a generalized 3D reconstruction frame, which allows us to directly compare SMS and 3D acquisitions. Here the gradients of a standard EPI and our CEPI trajectories are shown, as well as the corresponding coverage in the KXY plane. To achieve minimal readout length, we use the maximal gradient power and slew rate. A reduction of the readout length by about 12% compared to the standard lib kip epi can be obtained this way. Although historically SMS has been regarded as a 2D acquisition, our group recently proposed the treatment of SMS as a form of 3D acquisition in analogy to volumetric 3D imaging as shown on the right-hand slide here. In this framework, identical CPI trajectories can be used for both 3D volumetric or SMS acquisitions. For the case of the SMS acquisition, the 3D trajectory is shown in red at an undersampling factor of 4 and 8. For the 3D volumetric imaging, the CPI trajectory is then simply, simply shifted in KZ using C phase encoding gradients um, prior to the readout. The complete set of phase encodes leads to the case-based coverage of the blue plus the red trajectories. We tested the CEPI trajectory in point spread function and SNR simulations to understand the effect that the reduced case-based sampling would have on the image quality. Point spread functions are shown for the EPI and the CEPI on resonance and with an offset of 150 Hz. The major difference between the two maps can be seen in the diagonal direction, which are also the ones in which the sampling has changed the most. The changes in the point switch function reflect the change towards a more circular symmetry of the CEPI um, sampling. In agreement, brain phantom simulations on the right show that the major effects on the image, images are predominantly in the diagonal direction as well. Furthermore, the SNR is reduced to about 77%, um, which correlates well with the reduction of the sampling points of the trajectories. Overall, these deviations are relatively minor and comp comparable image quality between the EPI and the CEPI can be expected. Similar to EPI, the alternating nature of the CEPI echo train leads to ghosting artifacts due to gradient imperfections. A linear model was used to correct the case list prior to recon reconstruction. This way, ghosting artifacts could be reduced to a few percent of image intensity. Brain and phantom images before and after the correction are shown on this slide. These are the fully sampled brain images that we obtained using the CPI and EPI trajectories. 32 slices of 3 mm thickness were obtained. In agreement with the results from the simulations, the image quality is very comparable. The acquisition time for fully sampled images is 2.2 seconds. To accelerate the acquisition, lip kaipi undersampling schemes were applied with 4 and 8 fold acceleration. The corresponding case based trajectories are the ones shown in an earlier slide on the case based trajectories. Using these CEPI gradients, SMS as well as 3D volumetric CEPI fMRI time series were measured, and the mean images are shown on this slide. 
each set of images was rendered equally, and one can see that, that in the case of the SMS, a clear reduction of the um, uh, SNR occurs with higher multiband factors. While for the 3D acquisition, the SNR is nearly constant. One major cause for the loss of SNR for the high acceleration factors in the SMS acquisition is the shorter TR that goes along with it. A quick look at the acquisition timing helps to understand this difference between 3D and SMS sampling. In the case of the 3D acquisition, the entire volume is excited each time and results in an averaging over the entire acquisition time of the volume. This means that the TR remains unchanged for different acceleration factors. And as a result, the SNR of the image is very similar too. In the case of the SMS acquisition, however, multiband factor the multiband factor, which in our case is linked to the acceleration factor, dictates how many slice groups are needed to cover the whole image volume, and thereby also dictates the duration um, before the same slice group is excited again. For higher uh, multiband factors, the TR is therefore shorter, and uh, it also reduces the time for relaxation, which ultimately leads to a lower SNR. This also means that um, each slice group is acquired within a sub-period of the acquisition time of the entire volume, so that each slice group is sharper, de sharper defined in, um, in time compared to the 3D acquisition. We believe that this has major implications on T-score for FRMI measurements. When we look at the temporal SNR of the different SMS FRMI series, we also observe a decrease in TSNR with larger acceleration factors. This was consistent for all data sets that we acquired. Again, um, major factors for the SMS are the reduced TR and flip angle, but also G-factor noise plays an important role. The corresponding G-factor maps for I equals 4 and 8 are shown below, which show a large penalty, especially in the case of the acceleration factor of 8. Other factors um, are residual aliasing and physiological noise fluctuation at higher frequency. Removing the high frequency noise by low pass filtering in the decimation process was found to increase the TSNR of the accelerated data. But the TSNR still remained a little bit lower than for the fully sampled case. In the case of the 3D volumetric acquisition, mean TSNR values were comparable with the ones from the SMS, with the exception of the fully sampled ones which was significantly lower. Interestingly, both the fully sampled 3D and SMS images had similar SNR and the same sampling frequency. So we believe that in the case of a 3D acquisition, averaging of high frequent fluctuations such as physiological noise and motion and during the relatively long acquisition time of a single volume leads to the decrease in um, anti-SNR. These are the bold maps for an audiovisual fMRI experiment with a visual stimulus of roughly 10 seconds and a two second long audio tone. For both SMS and 3D CEPI, we generally observe similar activation in the visual and audio auditory cortices. Again, with the exception of the fully sampled 3D series, which hardly showed any activation at all. Relatively low TSNR of the series alone cannot explain this outcome, as the R equals 8 3D acquisition with the lowest TSNR, but the highest sampling rate shows significantly more activation. We believe that the averaging of the bold response over the 2.2 uh, second long sampling period reduces the sensitivity of this acquisition even further. Although our results were consistent for all volunteers, um, a larger cohort study is needed to investigate these effects more thoroughly. But at this point, it appears as if reducing the sampling rate is crucial for um, successfully using 3D fMRI acquisitions. This brings me to our conclusions. The CEPI trajectory enables high temporal resolution for fast fMRI, with sampling periods down to 275 milliseconds. Also, the um, blip CPI SMS and 3D bold fMRI is possible using a 3D generalized signal equation framework, including a straightforward ghosting correction. Regarding the fMRI results, generally 
Um, similar activation sensitivities and TSNR for the SMS and 3D case uh, are observed. However, an exception is the fully sampled 3D acquisition, which uh, makes us believe that acceleration is crucial for the 3D acquisition and due to temporal smoothing. Thank you for your attention.